When you get into international settings, there can be special problems that come up because the lawyers on the other side are from another country and subject to different rules. For example, in a adjudicatory setting, like a trial or um, arbitration, some countries have rules that say the lawyers aren't supposed to talk to their witnesses ahead of time and prepare them, and in fact, might make it a crime. Whereas in the US, I think we would consider it malpractice if you didn't talk to your witness ahead of time. So if you bring these two different cultures together before the same tribunal, and one thinks it's completely improper to talk to the witnesses, and the other thinks it's completely improper not to, you've got a real conflict. One of the activities that I've been involved in are efforts to develop um, model rules and principles that international tribunals can use as a template to adopt so that there's one set of rules and all the lawyers in the proceeding are uh, playing on the, you know, are operating on a level playing field. And so lawyers are now traveling around the world, but the regulatory system is way behind the reality of this sort of legal practice. So I focus on investigating what's happening and making recommendations and suggestions for how the regulatory system should adapt. Um, historically, the bulk lawyer regulation came from states, particularly from the state Supreme Courts. And what we've seen over time is more and more federal regulation, and we've also seen more and more regulation um, coming from international entities. And sometimes that comes in the form of um, binding law, sometimes it comes in the form of what you might call soft law, international recommendations, but which then get picked up by our government um, and are used for lawyers. First of all, the current rule has had, since 2002, a provision that applies to U.S. lawyers who are outbound to foreign countries. But the language was adopted wholesale from the domestic context and it doesn't work quite perfectly. Um, so, for example, right now if you're appearing before the U.S. IRN uh, Claims Court, which is located in the Netherlands, because that court has not adopted rules of conduct for lawyers appearing before it, you would be bound under the current rule by Dutch law even though there might be uh, no Dutch lawyers in the case, the case has nothing to do with the Netherlands, there's no, um, you know, there's no connection at all, but the, the fallback provision says you apply the rules of the jurisdiction where the court sits and that's where it's physically located. The rule would change that so that, that if the tribunal doesn't adopt rules, which by the way we hope they will and we're going to encourage them, but if they don't, the fallback rule would be to go to the U.S. rules.